Okay, so we have a Vasra Dalad Chet. One who sells a field um, has sold the stone. Uh, one who sells a field has sold the stones which are needed for it. The reeds in the vineyard that are needed for it, the produce which is attached to the ground, the clump of reeds which covers less than the area of a quarter cob, the watchman's hut which is not plastered, the un ungrafted carob tree, and a virgin sycamore. However, he has not sold the stones which are not needed for it, nor the reeds in the vineyard but are not needed for it, nor the produce which is detached from the ground when he said when he said to him, it and all that is in it. They are all sold and they are all sold. In any case, he has not sold the clump of reeds, which covers the area of a quarter cob, nor the watchman's hut, which is plastered, um, nor the grafted carob tree, nor the crop sycamore, nor the pit, nor the wine press, nor the cut dove coat, whether they are in disuse or in use. He must buy back a right of uh, a right of way. These are the words of Rabbi Akiva. The Chaman, however, say he need not, and Rabbi Akiva admits that when he said to him, except for these, he need not buy back a right of way. The Chama, however, may uh, the Chama, however, say he must buy a right of way in, re in regard to what is stated in regard to a sale. But one who gives a gift gives all of them. When brothers divide the inheritance, those who acquire a field acquire all of them. One who has takes possession of the state is of a convert. If he takes possession of a field, he takes possession of all of them. And one who consecrates a field consecrates all of them. Rem Shimon says one who consecrates a field has consecrated only the grafted carob tree and the crop sigum. One who sells a ship has sold the mast, the sail, the anchor, and all the oars, but he has not sold the slaves, the cargo sacks, or the cargo. When he said to him, it and all that is in it, they are sold. If he, hold, if he sold the wagon, he did not sell the mules. If he sold the mules, he did not sell the wagon. If he sold the yoke, he did not sell the oxen. And if he sold the oxen, he did not sell the yoke. The Rebuda says, the price informs us. How so? If he said to him, sell me your yoke for 200 zuz, it is well known that a yoke does not cost 200 zuz. The saint is, however, say the price is not proof. Okay. Mishnah Beis, HaMocher Es HaChamor. So somebody sells a donkey, Lo Machar Es Kelav, then he has not automatically sold all of the, the kelim that come with it, the saddlebags and uh, and the straps and whatever else. Just the donkey. Nachal Mahamadi Omer Machar Kelav. He says, no, the, um, he, he has sold the, the donkey's kelim. Now, what's the point of Machlokas between the Tanakama and Nachalamadi is that um, is the uh, the opinion of what donkeys are are used for. If donkeys are primarily used for for riding, um, um, um right. The Tanakama says that the stam a stam donkey is intended for somebody to ride on, not for carrying loads. So therefore, the when somebody sells a, a donkey stomach, or you don't need much to ride on a donkey, you just need to sit on its back. But if you want to carry loads, then you need all the equipment, the saddlebags, and the and whatever other, other equipment. So that's the that's the point of machlokas. Anyway, the halacha follows the Tanakhama. Rabbi Yehuda Omer, pamim pamim einan He says, well, it's uh, not so clear cut. Um, sometimes it is. Sometimes you, it is with the equipment when you can tell by the by the way the, the buyer asks. Kate said. So there's a there's a donkey there and it's got all the all the kalim on top on the donkey. And the the buyer comes to the owner and says, Sell me this donkey, please. He particularly is and he says that that shows that he's interested not only in the donkey, but in all of the kalim. So then if he agrees, then all of the kalim come with the donkey. However, if he asks the, the owner, he says, Is this your donkey? Um, then that then he's showing more interest in the donkey itself rather than in the kalim uh, that are on the donkey. Ain kalav nechorin. Interesting idea that he says it depends on the, on the way that the the seller the, the buyer phrases his question or or his offer to buy that uh, that that informs the the seller how much the how much he's actually selling at the time. However, the halacha doesn't follow Rabbi Yehuda anyway. Okay. Yeah. So somebody's selling a donkey again. So now he, uh, there's a foal that comes. So let's say it's a uh, it's a female donkey, and she's got a foal with her. So so he sees the so the buyer sees oh there's, there's a nursing donkey over here. I want I want this nursing donkey please, and that that implies automatically that he's buying the foal as at, at the same time. However, machar is a para, no machar is If he sees a nursing cow, he says is that is that a nursing cow? And he said, yeah, yeah, okay, I want to buy that. 
So that doesn't automatically bring along the calf. Why? What's the difference? The difference is the milk. Is that when somebody wants it, wants a nursing cow, he wants it for the milk. Okay, yeah. when somebody wants a nursing donkey, he doesn't want the milk. There's only one reason why he could want a nursing donkey is because he wants the fold as well. Yeah. Okay. Um Machar Ashba. If somebody sells um a um a garbage, oh, donkey. garbage yeah. donkey, yeah. Machar Zivla, then, then it's not just the, the, the place that he's sold, he's also sold the, the dung that's currently on it. Machar Bor, Machar Maimab. And if he sells uh, if he sells a system, then he's also sold the water that's in it. This uh, Kahati points out that this is actually um, um, the, the, that the Gemara states that our Mishnah is actually a Das Yachid. And the Chachamim disagree on this opinion and say that if, if he sells the bore, then he hasn't sold the water in it. Okay. And um, and there's a Makokis Arishanim, how to pass in this way. The Rambam Paskin is like Chachamim. That it's that the water is not sold, but the Rashbam and Tor ask him that it is sold. Machar yeah. Kaveris, if, if a person sells a beehive, Machar Devorim, he's not just selling the, the hive, he's selling the bees as well. Machar Shovach, if he sells a dove coat, Machar Yonim, and he also sells the birds that are inside the dove coat. Halokech Peros Shovach Nechavero, and if somebody purchases the right to the um, uh, to the off to the offspring of a of a dove coach. Um so he does a deal and says, okay, so um I'm, all of the all of the offspring from here I'm I'm buying. Nonetheless, he, he does not take the first the first pair of uh the the first Um shall go the Yeah, so so none so the, the this the seller retains the first two birds that are born. Because he doesn't want to, uh, because, um, the, the the parents should not should not flee, because um, this he, he didn't sell he didn't sell the whole the whole dove coat. Therefore, <laughs> the, the the first the first set of birds that he that he's keeping he's keeping for himself because that's going to make sure that, that he's got uh, he's still got birds in the <laughs> and only the following birds get uh, get bought. Paris Caveris, and what if he, if a person sells the rights to um the the uh the produce of a of of a uh, beehive, which means they create a new queen and the and the new queen flies away and uh, takes a whole bunch of uh of, of bees with her. Um not tell Shilosha and Achilin Omasares. So he takes the uh the, then the purchaser gets three three swarms of bees that come out of that hive. So they watch for the for the new queen to come out, and uh, I I I don't know anything about beekeeping, but uh, <laughs> but I assume they had a, they had a technique for catching the for catching the queen and getting the swarm of bees that comes that comes with her. Um, and then thereafter, after the first and, and Musares, so the word Musares that, that's used that we can't tell like uh, Sarah is uh, is, uh, is uh, um, uh, Nasaris is, is actually to castrate um and so study, if, uh, if, you bought, if you bought olive trees to cut. No, no, I'm not on olives. I'm, I'm still talking on the bee, about the bees. If he bought honeycombs, he must leave two combs. Right. So uh, I'm still talking about the, the, the word she not tell he takes three three swarms, umasaris. The word masaris is talking about thereafter they take it the series in in, in alternately. So then, yeah. after the after the first three swarms, they the, the following swarms, the the buyer and the seller split fifty fifty. So they alternate. Yes, alternate. Okay. Chalos devash. Now, what about if he if he purchases honeycombs? Maniach shtei chalos. He has to leave two honeycombs behind because there's got to be something left for the for the bees that are in the hive. Zaysim lakot. If he if a person purchases olive trees to cut down for wood. He must still leave two um two um major branch branches in, in each tree so that they can so that can can recover and regrow its branches. Okay. Uh Dalad. So this is a this is an important machlokis that we see between Rabbi Meir and, and Kachamim, is that if a person person purchases two trees. 
inside inside his neighbor's field. So he hasn't he hasn't purchased the land. This is Khatanim, he hasn't he has not uh, acquired the land, all he's got is the trees. Rabbi Meir Omer Kanakarka, but Rabbi Meir says that two trees is enough to say that he's acquired the land. And that's a machlokas that you'll see um, you know, plays out in a number of different places. And the, that Rabbi Meir says that, that two is enough to, to effect transfer of the land around them. Okay, so now you've got these two trees. Higdilu, and now they grow. Loi Shapeh, he's not, uh, so the, uh, the owner of the, the owner of the, of the land is not allowed to um, to cut the to 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 trim the tree. So even though um, even though even though the shade is damaging to to whatever he's got going around it, since he didn't sell the the land, it turns out that he's that he's got a shebot on his land for all the needs of these trees, and therefore um, all the time all the time that these trees are alive. He has to um, the land that they planted in. Although it's his, there, there's a, there's a shibud and he's and um, um, and he's he's not allowed to cut down uh, the, the 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 branches that that are putting shade on this on this land. Yeah. Um, and anything that grows out of the trunks is shelo. Anything that grows from from the from the base of the tree. Uh, belongs to the uh, uh, belongs to the owner of the of the trees, but if it's uh, and anything that grows, so if it grows up out of the trunk, that belongs to the owner of the trees. But the uh, but if it grows out from the roots, then the balakarka it must come and, and and cut it down because otherwise it looks like he's got three trees, and as soon as he's got three trees, he's then he's going to own the land. So the yeah. Balakark is going to be very particular about going cutting uh, and cutting off any any offshoots that are coming out from the roots. But in May soon, what happens if the, if these two trees die? Ain Lokarka. So the buyer has nothing, he has nothing left, he has no claim to the land. Kanashlosha, however, if he purchases three trees, Kanakarka, now he's also got the land around them. Higdilu, if these trees grow and they start casting uh, uh you know, Creating shade over over ground that is that does not belong to them that that's that's outside of their out of the um out of the area. You uh, shaped and the bar of karka is allowed to is allowed to trim them. But all, just like any just like any any two neighbors, if a if a tree grows from over from your neighbor's fence onto your onto your side, you're entitled to cut it. It's on your side, so you're allowed to cut it. So same thing happens over here. But all mena geza umina shorashin shalom and whatever grows out of the trunk or from the roots. Belongs to the to to the guy who bought the trees because even the land it belongs to him now. And if these three trees died, then he still owns the land that they were planted in. And he can go back in and uh, and plant more trees. All right. Okay. Let's uh, let's do a little bit of Kazara. I don't think we're going to be able to do the whole lot. Um, the base cut. Base test. Test. Okay. One must distance carcasses, graves, and a, and a tannery 50 cubits from a town. One may establish a tannery only to the east of the town. Rabbi Kiva says he may establish it in any direction except to the west, and he must distance it 50 cubits. One must distance a flax pool from vegetables and leeks from onions and mustard plants from the bees. Rabbi Yossi permits it in a case of mustard plants. And one must distance his tree 25 cubits from a pit, and in the case of a carrot or sycamore tree, 50 cubits. Whether from above or from the side, if the pit was there first, he cuts it down and pays compensation. If the trees, uh, if the tree was there first, he may not cut it down. If it is uncertain which was first, he may not cut it down. Rabbi Yossi says, even if the pit preceded the tree, he may not cut it down because this one digs within his property and that one plants within his property. Okay. Yeah, If one deposits produce with another person, he may deduct for the uh, decreases. For wheat and rice, nine half cows per core. For barley and for millet, nine cows per core. For spelt and for linseed, three uh, seams per core. Everything according to the measure, everything according to the time. Where it said, Rev. Yochum and Ben Yuri, what difference does it make to the mice? Do they, they, do they not eat whether for much or little? Rather, he deducts for decreases for one, for one core only. Rabbi Yehuda says if he had uh, been a log measure, he does not deduct for the teachers because it increases. He may deduct a six for wine, Yehuda says a fifth. He may deduct three lugum of oil per hundred and a log and a half for sediment and a log and a half for absorption. 
If he would refined oil, he may not deduct the sediment. If the vessel is both so old, he may not deduct it for absorption. Maybe Yehuda says also, if one sells refined oil to another for all the days of the year, the latter must accept upon himself a log and a half sediment per hundred. If one deposits a cast with another and its owner had not designated a place for it, and he moved it and it broke, if it broke from his hand, then, he, then if he had moved it for his benefit, he, I'm sorry. If he if, if moved it for his benefit, he is liable for its benefit. For his be, its benefit, he's exempt. If it broke after he put it down, whether he had moved it for his benefit or with benefit for, or for its benefit, is exempt. If the owner had designated a place for it and it moved and moved it and it broke, whether from his hand or another after he put it down, if he had moved it for his benefit, he's liable for its benefit. He is exempt. Okay. Okay. Okay, Sota. Hmm. Okay, dollar dollar. A betrothed woman and a woman waiting yibum would neither drink nor do they receive payment for the marriage contract, as it is said. When a woman strays from under the authority of her husband to the inclusion of the betrothed woman and a woman awaiting yibum, yibum, a woman married to a Kohen Gadol, a divorcee, or a woman who received Kalitza married to an ordinary Kohen, or Mazeris, or a Nisanite married to an Israelite, and an Israelite married daughter married to a Mamzer or a Nisanite, neither of these drink nor receive payment for the marriage contract. The following women also neither drink nor receive payments for the marriage contract. One who says, I am defiled, and one about who witnesses testify that she is defiled, and one who says, I will not drink, but one whose husband said, I will not give her to drink, and whose husband cohabitated with her on the way, receives payment for her marriage contract, but does not drink. If their husbands died before they were able to drink, Ben Shammai says they receive payment for the marriage contract, but do not drink. Ben says they neither drink nor receive payment for the marriage contract. A woman pregnant by a previous husband and a woman nursing a child by a previous husband neither drink nor receive payment for the marriage contract. These are the words of Ramea, but they come and say he can separate from her and take her back after a period of time. A sterile woman or an old woman or a woman who cannot bear children neither drink nor receive payments for the marriage contract. If Eliezer says he can marry another woman, be fruitful and multiply from her, and all women either, either drink nor do they receive payment for the marriage contract. The wife of a Kohen may drink that's it. That's it. Okay. And we have Yoma. Okay. Um, we have um, uh, Aleph Zion. If he wished to tell his young men, if he wished to tell his young men, other priests would snap before him with the index finger and they said to him, My Lord Cohen Guttle, stand up and cool off once on the floor. And they kept him busy until the time of the slaughtering and the day of the offering arrived. Every day they remove ashes from the altar at the call of the crier or thereabout, either before or after it. On Yom Kippur, it was done from midnight and on three and, and on the three festivals from the first watch. And yet before the call of the crier, the courtyard was already filled with Jews. At first, whoever wanted to remove the ashes from the altar did so. In case there were many, they ran and ascended the ramp, and whoever preceded his colleague into the four cubits won. If two of them were even, the administrator would say to them, put out a finger. And what did they put out? One or two fingers, but they did not put out a thumb in the temple. Okay, it's William. Okay, Gimel Zav. Regarding a Tahoe person who was chewing some food and it fell upon his clothing and upon a loaf of chuma, the loaf is Tahor. If he was eating crushed olives or moist dates, if any fruit was bit he desired to suck and he fell onto his clothing and onto a, uh, a loaf of chuma, the loaf is Tahoe. If he was eating dried olives and dried dates or any fruit whose pit he did not desire to eat, uh, to suck, and it fell upon his clothing and upon a loaf of truma, the loaf is tahor. Both the tahor person and the tevel yom share these laws. The mayor said both these and those are tummy in the case of a tevel yom, for the beverages of a tummy person affect the hexu, both when he is desirous of them and when he is not desirous of them. But they can come and say a tevel yom is not considered a tummy person. Regarding produce of mice that was rendered susceptible to tumor by a beverage and it was touched by a table yom by unclean hands or one unclean hands, we separate tumor's mice from it in Tahara because the mice of Rishon is a shlishi and a shlishi is Tahara in the case of Kulin. A woman who is table yom upon may need a dough and she may separate challah and set side and place it on an Egyptian tray or on a plank. And she brings the tray or the plank close and orally designates the piece of jo, a dough as kala, because the dough is a shlishi and the shlishi is tahor in the case of kulin. Okay. And, 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 and,
He says, okay, Gimel, on Gimel base. If he ate two portions of Caleb in the lapse of, of awareness, he was liable to only one contos. But if he ate Caleb blood, Caleb blood, leftover offerings and pickle in one lapse of awareness, he is liable for each one. In this, many kinds of more are more stringent, stringent than one kind. But in the following, one kind is more stringent than many kinds. If he ate half a box, half an olive bulk, and again ate half an olive bulk, if they were one kind of one kind, he is liable for of two kinds, he is exempt. And how much time may he take for him to, to eat them as, as he as if he would eat them as parched grains of corn? These are the words of Ramea, but the sages say until it takes no more than the beginning to the end that it would take time to eat a peros. If he ate tummy foodstuffs or drank tummy beverages, or if he drank a ribus of wine and entered the temple and tarried in the cons consumption for as long as it takes to eat a peros, he is liable. If Reb Eliezer says he is, he is interrupted or he diluted it with the least with a water, he's exempt. There is an instance of one, one who performs an act of eating and is liable for it for kato, so one ashram. The Tame person who ate Caleb, which was left over from consecrated food, and it was on the poor. Reb Meir says if it was on Sabbath, then he carried it out in his mouth, and if he is additionally liable, they said to him, this is not in the same category. Okay, that's it. And I got to run. Right, have a good day. I hope everything's well. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See you tomorrow.